Zipper rolls out to the right, pitches off to Taylor, and Taylor's to the 20. Down to the 15, down to the 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Billy Taylor scored a touchdown from 21 yards out. The crowd goes berserk. It was November 22nd, 1969 that they came to Barry, Michigan, all dressed in maize and blue. The words were said, the prayers were read, and everybody cried. But when they closed the coffin, there was someone else inside. Oh, they came to Barry, Michigan, but Michigan wasn't dead. And when the game was over, it was someone else instead. Eleven Michigan Wolverines put on the gloves of gray, and as the organ played the victors, they laid Woody Hayes away. Under center is Wangler at the 45. He goes back. He's looking for a receiver. He throws downfield to fire. Who's got it better than us? Nobody! Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go Blue, and welcome to our Michigan Game Day show. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. In just a few minutes, we'll be joined by Nick Baumgartner from The Athletic. First, a few of my thoughts to get us going. Good news that Mike Hart is joining the staff and the team via Zoom this week for meetings. There is no word as to when he'll return to the team. Sharon Moore said on Wednesday, that's up to the doctors. We all know how big this game is for both teams. Penn State wants to validate its solid start, and we want to show everyone we're a contender. This really is a tipping point game on many levels. A loss by either team doesn't mean they're out of the Big Ten East race. It would just mean you have zero margin for error the rest of the way. Last year's game in Happy Valley was a nail-biter of an affair between two equally talented teams. I'd like to see us win comfortably on Saturday, I always do, but my gut tells me we're going to be watching a heavyweight fight. In my mind, this is a must-win game for Michigan. From a pure talent perspective, once again, these teams are evenly matched. It will come down to big plays, mistakes, and special team play. It always does. My guest today does agree with me, this is a must-win game for Michigan. Up next with his always interesting thoughts on our Wolverines is Nick Baumgartner from The Athletic. So stay with us. on the show today to uh, take a look back at what we saw in Bloomington on Saturday and of course ahead to uh, the big one in the big house with Penn State is Nick Baumgartner from The Athletic. Great to have you back with us again Nick. Always good to be here Mike. Well before we look ahead to uh, this Saturday's game let's spend a few minutes uh, looking back at Saturday's Indiana win. Uh, Given everything that happened in the first half with uh, Coach Hart were you surprised at how Michigan struggled in that first half against the Hoosiers? Uh no, uh, I'm not for more reasons than than probably just that. Um, to be honest, I I think when you look at that game going into the game, um, you know Tom Allen. Obviously, when you look at it now, with we have the hindsight, they made a I believe they've made a staff change since then. He fired an offensive line coach, um, and they're shaking some things up. But what that tells me, Mike, is that going into that game, um, and we know that Tom Allen circles some games on the calendar and can get the guys maybe more cranked normally than, than he normally does, which is at a high level any, anyway. But I think this was a game for them 
that was going to be a big measuring stick. Like, if it doesn't work today, we're going to have to make some changes type of game. So I, I thought Indiana was going to throw a lot at them, and it was going to have to be a big – I thought this was going to be a huge test for McCarthy and the whole thing on the road because I thought they were going to get a really good shot from Indiana. And, you know, when you're, when you're as good as Michigan is right now and, and you're at the spot that they're at, and you have things to work on, but you're also better than most teams you're playing, like that, you know, Mike, that's the standard that you're going to get held to, right? Like you should blow everybody out and, and all this sort of thing. So, frankly, no. I mean, it was a tie game, right? I think at halftime. And, mm-hmm. I mean, that you know, it's the Big Ten. I think Indiana is a good program. They don't necessarily have the talent that they always would like to have, but I think that's a good program that fights really hard and, I don't really like to get down on teams that struggle with Indiana <laughs> too much because historically it just it, it's not been a good barometer for this is a sign of something bad to come. You know what I mean? So yeah. that to me wasn't shocking. Well, J.J. Uh, McCarthy had, of course, to uh, throw more on Saturday because IU was so committed to uh, stopping the run. So your right. thoughts on his overall performance, Nick? Well, I thought it was very good. I thought, you know, he's had a lot of firsts. And I think Harbaugh talked about um, the first 300-yard game he had, uh, you know, the first road win, I believe, which, which wasn't this week. It was last week. Um, so, you know, he's had his batches of firsts, I guess. And it wasn't his first interception either. It wasn't his first turnover in this game. But I thought this was the first big test that he had in, in the old, um, what I like to call the Harbaugh quarterback test of, you know, Jim and John have talked about this and Jack over the years. There's no truer test of a quarterback um, than – when he throws an interception, you know, preferably on the road in a close game, um, and then he finds a way to not only leave that interception there on the ground, but bounce back, lead the team down and score, and then come back and win the game. And that's what he did. And for a young quarterback to let it go and leave the pick that he threw in the end zone there and just move on and not blame anybody or just forget it and then go win the game, like that's a maturity level uh, on display that's pretty high there. So I – that that was the most impressive day, I think, frankly, uh, from a management standpoint, <clears throat> that McCarthy's had. Period. I, that was as impressed as I've been with him uh, at any point in his time so far. Yeah, I would agree with that. Well, it was another uh, big work day for Blake Corum. Twenty-five carries, went over uh, the hundred-yard mark again. And you know, the more I watch him, I thought I'd never say this about Blake, but he, he looks like he gets stronger as the game goes on, doesn't he? Yeah. I think it's that weight that he gained, right? I think it's, yeah. you know, he's up to 210 now. To, that's something that we've noticed, you know, doing a lot of the evaluations you know, for the draft next year, which was, which was, you know, when Corum came in, he was probably 185 pounds, maybe 180. Like, I mean, and that was, you know, if he ate a couple sub sandwiches uh, that morning, right? So he was <laughs> yeah. really small and we knew he had the speed and we knew he wasn't afraid of contact. I think that was the thing that everybody was surprised at when he showed up, but it was like, man, he's got to find a way to bulk up because he's not going to be able to handle this. Uh, and it, for me at the time, it wasn't even about like the NFL. It was like, he's not going to be able to handle the Big Ten like at that size. So he's going to have to bulk up. To his credit, he did, you know, early off. And then this year, you know, all the way up to 210, I think that was a concerted effort by him and Michigan to make sure that he was ready physically to handle a lot of the dirty yards this year, I call them, you know, the stuff that Haskins got last year things that they were going to ask him to do. They, that big run that he had uh, for the touchdown is a between-the-tackle gap play that he just makes on his own. Mm-hmm. Like, those are things that last year, Haskins is running and getting seven or eight yards, and Gorham is now cutting back against the grain and getting 60-yard touchdowns. And, you know, he has the stamina. We've seen now for a couple weeks in a row, he's been able to carry the ball, you know, high 20s. Yeah, he is, the arrow, as Harbaugh would say, is all the way up. I mean, Blake Gorham is playing terrific football. The one thing I'd like to see that we haven't yet from him, Mike, is, is more with the hands, you know, more in the pass catching game. If, if they can, I wouldn't force it if I was Michigan, but I think that there's more there. I think they can get more out of that. Um, and, and that remains to be seen, but that, but a great start to the season for him and exactly what they needed really, because there was a void there. There was a hole and Edwards got hurt. They needed somebody to step up. And he has been, he's been aces. He's been a terrific, terrific player. I think, Mike, he's probably on pace to have one of the best yardage seasons since Mike Hart, if you look at it. And I I can't imagine that there'd be a guy that would have a claim to be playing better through a seven-game period 
in that time since Mike Hart. I mean, it's been it's been that good of a start for Blake Gorham, I think. No, I absolutely agree with you. The only thing I wonder about is, I mean, he's getting these 25, 30 carries a game, and, and it was out of necessity uh, for the past few weeks yeah. because, you know, Donovan was uh, getting healthy and getting back into rhythm. So now, I, I you know, when I watch the game, I think, hmm, you've, he's in a rhythm now. Clearly, after uh, six games, he's shown that he can handle that 25 to 30 carries. But don't you think you still want to get Donovan more carries? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that as time goes forward here, you know, and as he has gotten further away from that injury, you know, I think you probably feel better about maybe loading more on his plate. You know, maybe once, you know, especially this weekend and going forward, you know, the, the physicality is going to crank up here, as we know. So it, not just Donovan, but I would also, you know, add the whole the whole crew. I mean, they've I know they've rotated Stokes in there too, but I mean, this would also be a day, and as you go forward, uh, I think this is a day where you start getting guys like A.J. Henning more involved in the run game too. You know what I mean? Like, see if you can find a way to manufacture, you know, three sweeps a game for him or something like that to take six and loads off. So I think there's a lot of ways they can take stuff off of Corum's plate, which is the great thing about this offense. But the best news, Mike, I think is that if and when they need it, he's got it. And, like, sometimes, as we've seen over the years, sometimes you just need to leave a guy out there, and I don't know if it's rhythm or just you trust him more than you trust everybody else. Sometimes in college, you just need to leave a guy out there and let him go win you the game. And I think Blake has proven that he can kind of do that for him. No, oh, absolutely. And, you know, when I was watching the uh, the offense operate on Saturday, I, you know, I thought to myself, I know a lot of Michigan fans are saying, well, you know, we're not maybe where we wanted to be right now at the midway point of the season, but – you know, this offense is you know, statistically in the top 10 in just about every category. But right. still, you know, I get the feeling watching it, they haven't scratched the surface of their potential yet, Nick. Well, no, I mean, they're not doing a lot with, um, you know, it's all that's there with the run game, all that's there with a lot of the motion and all the different tricks and things that we ended up seeing late in November last year and all the stuff that we saw them sort of, I guess, tease, we'll say, uh, you know, with, McCarthy during his little spots here and there. All those things, I guess, would still be on the table. Um, and all those things can, and I imagine will be on the way, uh, the different variations and things and the cool stuff that we all think about. But more importantly, I think what we've seen is J.J. McCarthy through the handful of starts here, and, and they've handled this very well, you know, continuing to expand the base package of throws and concepts that just he has on his sheet every week. I think as that grows – and as they continue to sort of say, okay, well, you know, this week we went in uh, with like four third and seven calls that we like. Next week we're going in with eight, right? Like I, I think that I don't know what that number would be, but as that grows throughout the call sheet, and I think with JJ as good as he is and as talented as he is, you can sort of continue. And we talked about that a lot with Cade last year with he is smart enough to handle more. Well, JJ is not only smart enough, he's physically capable enough to handle like even more than that. So as you just throw the offense and as more throws become available to you as a play caller on, like if it's third and 10, don't be afraid to do certain things because he can make the throw. Like those are the things that I'm curious to see as you go forward. Not necessarily, you know, how efficient does it look play to play against a team that you should be rolling over. But when you get into a tough game and it's third and 11, uh, are you going to be willing to make, you know, willing to draw something up where he can put the ball over the middle and get you 15 yards because he'll do it. Like those are the those are the throws and those are the spots and the moments that I think in this game there's a few of them in there. Those are the ones, especially Saturday against Penn State, that I think we'll start to see more of, or at least he'll be put in those situations where you know he'll be tested and we'll get to see if you know how he responds. Well, Nick, uh, let's talk about the defense for a minute. They gave up some yards to uh, Indiana in the first half. Uh, of course, a lot of that was because Indiana came out, went up tempo, started uh, throwing to the perimeter, uh, uh, testing those Michigan linebackers. In the second half, it was a, it was a shutdown. But at this point, I think we have to say it's a pretty darn good unit, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. I mean, it's it's a team group. I think that there are certainly holes, um, but there's uh, it's a team group like everybody thought it would be, and it, it's getting a lot of really good individual efforts. And I think Mike Morris <clears throat> continues to be the guy. Um, I think he had eight pressures against Indiana, you know, per PFF anyway. And I when I was looking at the numbers before this game, and yeah, he gets up to twenty six on the season. And the raw numbers before this game, Mike Mike Morris was I think one or two in the country in terms of like just pressures from a from a pass rush, you know, obvious third down, obvious passing standpoint. He was like a 
up there where Hutchinson was last year in terms of the rankings. I mean, that is how productive from a pressure standpoint Mike Morris has been. I mean, when we talk about replacing things that you lost, you know, he hasn't replaced all of the stuff that they lost with, with Aiden Hutchinson. And it's not, it's not fair to ask that, but I think he's probably replaced more than maybe they would have even hoped. And I think that they hoped for a lot, if, if that makes any sense. And I, I think you're just getting some really good efforts up there from a lot of guys. People have talked about Iyabi Oki and what he's been able to add. I know Harbaugh talks a lot about Mason Graham and some of the growth they've gotten, you know, from there and, and all that. But I look at, I look at the guys that, we expected a lot of a, a lot out of when the year started and they're delivering a lot. And Mike Morris is number one on that list. I think uh, right now, maybe even like of anybody on the team, like he has been rock solid and they have some issues that they have to, to figure out. I think Jesse Minter still has to get comfortable and prove that he can, you know, do this against, you know, really good offensive coordinators in the big 10. That'll be a big test this week. But, man, alive, has it helped to have a response from a guy like Morris. Jenkins is playing well in there, too. But Morris was the guy that I think we all looked at, you know, going into the season. And if you really knew this team, you looked at him and you said, well, if he plays the way he can play, they'll be better up front than you think. And I think that's what we've seen so far. Well, Nick, this Saturday, uh, the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Uh, Penn State rolls into the big house, and we know they're a good team. Uh, Sean Clifford back at quarterback. Seems like he's been there forever. You know. Yes. A lot of people, I mean, even Penn State fans will say, are we going to see the good Sean Clifford or the bad right, Sean yeah. Clifford? You never know. <laughs> and even during the course of a game, I think he's one of the most uh, most mystifying quarterbacks to watch because he can look like, really is. look like crap for three series. And then he comes out and goes 10 for 10, uh, converts a couple of third and longs with his uh, legs. He's something to watch, but... You know, a statistic that's interesting to me, given all that, is he's he's number one in the Big Ten as far as quarterbacks go in uh, red zone percentage. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the, <laughs> the guy just gets it done, doesn't he? He is like the James Franklin of quarterbacks. Like, that's <laughs> all, I don't know what else to say. Like, when you're describing it right there, like, that's the perfect description. They're like the perfect pairing because it, it can look, like you just said, it can look so bad to a point where you're like, how are they playing this guy? How are they <laughs> – how are they doing this? They have a five-star freshman on the bench uh, who's come in and played very well at times. I mean, we've been over this before. Will Levis transferred. But, you know, it's the th- it, like you said, Mike, I mean, it's, it's what Penn State does as a team. Um, if you're sloppy yourself that day, they're going to probably weasel their way through the game and be physical with you. And he is going to make plays in those really critical spots. He's played so much football. And I think that that's the point now that he's going to take chances and make some mistakes, but as a college quarterback, you know, he's going to get some back too. And he's going to answer the bell in the red zone. Like you said, he's going to make the tough throws and the tough plays. And if you ask him to go run the ball and get six yards, he'll do it, you know, and not complain about it. Like those types of things. So it's the same as it's always been against Penn state. They have a very athletic defense. They're long, they're quick, they're explosive. They can get off the ball and they can create havoc. And the offensive line is going to be tested. It's going to be a huge test for McCarthy, just as it was for McNamara last year down there. You know, you're going to have to – there's going to be the stakes. You're going to have to overcome them. They're going to have plays that they make that look like they might wreck the game. Um, but you have to find a way, like you said, defensively, to not let them just slop six, you know, six plays that result in 21 points. You yeah. can't let that happen. Like, that is the ultimate sin against Penn State where they will play – horrific offensive football for 50 plays and beat you with five because you just fell asleep. And so those are the games that they've lost, you know, frankly, against Penn State, even the blowout where it's gotten off the rails so fast that you can't even, you know, the whole thing is over in in a blink. So it's about being consistent and having all the things and, and having the type of focus they had last year in that game. I think that's the recipe. I think when you play Penn State, because you can beat them at their own game, even when you don't have your fastball, because you can just, play with better focus. And I think that that's, that's the key here for Michigan going into this week. Well, last year, Penn State uncharacteristically relied on the passing game. And as we know, Penn State's not built to play that way. So that uh, no. that flamed out in the last uh, seven, six games of the year for them. This year, though, they needed to improve the running game. There was a lot of emphasis on that in the spring, but the running backs weren't there yet. The, yeah. two, the two kids they have carrying the ball are freshmen. Uh, Nick Singleton right. and Katron Allen 
And with them, Penn State now has a legit running game, don't they? Oh, yeah. These guys are real, the real deal. Um, they look like juniors. Uh, <laughs> like Singleton yeah. is, is for real. And, and what I think that they're giving them is finally, you know, I thought Noah Kane was going to be this guy for them, and then it just didn't work out there. But for the first time since Barkley, since Saquon, Franklin has a running back that can kind of make up for the sloppiness that the offensive line usually plays with. I mean, it's a leaky offensive line that if you don't have a really good running back, you're going to leave yards on the table. And finally, for the first time in a little while here, I, I think they do have, and they're getting better every week, Mike, like you said, they're freshmen. They have backs that are going to not only get you whatever you – it's a decent front. It's not great. It's not bad. But they're going to make more than what you give them. It's a little bit like what Kenneth Walker was able to give Michigan State last year. It's so critical in, in college football, and especially in this league, when your line isn't where you want it. Your back has to be awesome. And Penn State finally has you – know, I think that's been the recipe for Franklin. It would be easier if you just built a good line. But whatever. you know. I mean, it's, he needs to have that kind of you know, back back there who can make plays, and they have two of them now. So they have the recipe this year for a team that can ugly it up and kind of clunk down the field. And if you're not careful, um, they're going to muck it up with the NVIDIA. And it's like Penn State, the way they built this thing, the way Franklin's built it, left. people criticize him a lot. And um, he's made decisions over the years in games that are more than worthy of criticism and blah, 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 all this stuff. But you have to respect what's there. And the consistency has been he's kept the roster loaded with talent. They play the game a lot like Mark Antonio used to play at Michigan State, where they try to just muck it up and see if they can make one or two more plays at the end. And if you play that way with them and aren't mentally tough enough to handle it, they're going to beat you. And so this is a big test for Michigan because every team that you have is a little different, and you never quite know. And I think that we haven't really seen this team get into a, a fight like that yet, right? We haven't seen them mm-hmm. get into a, a a battle in the deep water, as we'll say, and this is the first team I think that can probably drag them all the way out there. And maybe they won't, but, you know, this is the first test that it feels maybe, I don't know if I'd say likely, but it seems like it's possible, we'll say, more than possible. And so it's, it, it'll be anticipated if the able goes. Well, as well as Michigan's defense is played, and we just talked about that a minute ago, we've seen some teams that do some things well, uh, run or throw, but we have not seen a balanced attack that this defense has had to defend now, this offense will give us a really good idea as a whole how the defense is or where it is right now, won't it? Yes, again, I mean, ex- exactly, because I, and I was down on the front there a little bit. <laughs> like, well, I mean, they're going to run the ball. You know, the physicality, the, you know, the, the stuff you're going to have to deal with outside, the receivers are strong enough to make plays on you if you're not careful. The tight ends can get open. This is a Big Ten football team with top 15 talent, and this is not one of those games where – defensively you can just leak at three spots and let Mike Morris beat two guys and make a play and get you off the field. You know, that's not what's going to happen here. You know, you're going to have to, everybody has to, like you said, like every gap has to be accounted for, or they're just going to run the ball down your throat for four yards a chunk and you're not going to be able to get off the field. Like that's how it's going to go. So it will be a true test of everybody on the field. You won't have to, if, if there are weak links, we'll find them after this game, because, you know, I mean, if there are, Obvious weak links will be exposed in this game, especially in the front seven. Um, and, and that's the type of test that I think Michigan needs right now. Um, I, look, I think Michigan's a good team. I think they're a good football team. I, I haven't seen much from them that I would say suggest to me that people should be worried, overly worried, overly concerned. I mean, this is a game that they should win, They, I, I think, frankly. But it's also a game that they can lose and a game that over the years they have lost games like this. Um, so it's that first true test of are you going to have the mental toughness that's going to match your physical talent? And Michigan is a really talented football team, especially offensively. I think they've got more talent defensively in some spots than people probably gave them credit for when the season started. But as we know, Mike, um, these are those games that if you're not tough enough upstairs, you lose. And this is the first real test of that, I think, for the 2022 version of uh, Jim Harbaugh's Michigan team. Absolutely. I think everyone agrees with that. Of course, we don't know how it's going to play out on Saturday, Nick, but when you you look at a lot of tape, which I have this week, and then the statistics for both teams, these two teams sure look really evenly matched, though, don't they? Yeah, it's always hard with this one because it's, it's, it's always about the talent is just even. It's always so even. Um, you know, historically, 
I think when you look at the recruiting rankings and, you know, I don't know that they necessarily recruit against each other as much at every spot as they did when Harbaugh first got here. When Harbaugh first got to Michigan, he and Franklin went at each other quite a bit, Mm -hmm. if I remember. And I think they still do sometimes. But it's very similar. They recruit the, the similar athletes on defense. They go into New Jersey and get guys. They go to similar areas and similar spots, and they just they look for similar players, and they have the kind of, you know, a national brand that can attract that. And so they, they will have first-round draft picks on defense, and they will have, you know, receivers that can make plays, and they'll have running backs. So it's always a hard game to judge, and it's always about which team is more together, which team is mentally more there right now at this point in the season when these two teams play. That's that is the winner every time. We used to think home or away. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily what it is anymore. I don't think we can always say that. I think when you look back over the years, wherever these teams have been mentally, and it's always up and down with these two teams, they always go on a little bit of a roller coaster a little bit historically. In the one year where, in the years where Penn State had it going, and they look like they're they're together and they, and they look like a functioning unit, they hammer Michigan. And then when it's when the roles are reversed, Michigan hammers Penn State, and it's just. This is a this has always been a temperature check for Harbaugh and Franklin of like where are your teams at mentally are they are they there at a championship level with the focus and because if they're not this is a game where you're probably going to get embarrassed and lose right like so mm-hmm. I think this is the big test here and it it falls I think for both coaches I think it falls at the perfect time right in the middle of October like this when you still got a lot coming up you know to see where you guys are at and I think it'll be should be a good game I think both teams have shown some resiliency and some, and some toughness early on this season. I think both have some good players. And yeah, we'll see where it goes. You know, one thing I wonder about, Nick, is when just if you look back at last year's game in Happy Valley, just a very close game, and, and Penn State was yeah. able to make it a game, and they couldn't run the football. Right. But it was, you know, both teams uh, kept the penalties under control, didn't turn the ball over, and when they're both playing the kind of football they're coached, that's what you get in a Penn State-Michigan game. So it usually comes yeah. down to something – the little things. And one of the little things that I think about is, you know, the news we got a week or so ago that long snapper, uh, Will Wagner uh, was going to be out. So this is the kind of game where Mm -hmm. you you know, your field goal kicker might come into play here. Absolutely. And you know, that field goal that was blocked on, on Saturday, that looked like a low snap to me that uh, Moody just didn't get under. I mean, you saw the holder have to move it, and that worries me in a big game, but it it is something to keep an eye on with uh, a new long snapper in a big game, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we've seen extra points in this game, you know, cause problems. You get behind, you start chasing points. Like you said, Mike, this is the last year's game was the first time in a long time that Michigan Penn State, um, and it wasn't a perfect game. It was a mucky fist fight, but it felt like the old, um, 90s Lloyd games a little bit where both teams are really good. Um, both teams weren't perfect, but both teams, like you said, we're, we're not going to really feed much. So we're going to give you much. You're going to have to kind of earn everything you got and you're going to have to do it against even talent. It wasn't going to be one of these deals where you're playing a hard charging Northwestern team. That's really trying hard, but you have better players at every single spot. No, no, this is more like practice. You're playing yourself and, it's, it's a true look inside of, you know, how ready you are. And I, that's why last year's game was a really fun one. It was exciting and it was a good one to watch. And I think this year's game can be similar. And uh, last year, I think, spoke to the growth that Franklin and Harbaugh both, I think, sort of had mentally because they both those teams were able to fight in there and hang in there. And uh, hopefully we see something similar. I think it could be a really good game on Saturday. And when these two teams, like you said, Mike, when they play the way they can, it can be really special. Ohio State and Penn State have put on some whoppers over the years. I don't see any reason why Michigan and Penn State can't do the same. Well, final question before we uh, let you get away, Nick. I don't know if this is a must-win game for Michigan. I think it is. A lot of people say it's not. Sure. Uh, but, you know, if they do get a win on Saturday, and and every year, every team is different. So this is not last year's team. So exactly. H- however they get it done, it is the kind of game that can be a, a, a real springboard on so many levels and change the trajectory of the season, can't it? Yeah, huge game. And, and to me, I agree with you, Mike. This is a must win. And I would say that for the exact reason that you also said that this isn't last year's team. Um, this is the defending Big Ten championship team with the talent to do it again. And you got them at home. And to me, a loss here would be one that you'd regret. It'd be one that you're going to look back on 
possibly when the year's over and say we're 10 and two or 11 and one and oh my oh what would have been right so i mean like that's what i look at when i look at a game like that and that's where their mindset should be you know as a team that won a championship last year knows what it takes understands the opportunity here and also understands that you know hey look this is one that you have to get through and have to cross off and have to move into your rear view. And when you win games that we all know are those type of games that you, you're, you know, well, we'll see, you know, Hey, they could win the big 10, but if they don't beat Penn state or a team like that, it's not going to matter. Well, if you beat a team like that and you can put it in your rear view, the confidence that you get from that, that goes on top of everything else that, you know, sort of reaffirms what we already knew about that. You are good. And I think this team is legit good. It's a, but like to your point, Mike, I think that it's a must win because they need to go out there and prove it to themselves uh, and earn the right to have that confidence, I, I suppose, on, on the back of it. You don't want to lose a game like this at home and, and, you know, go into the stretch drive with regret because that's what it would be. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and I think that that's what, that's what this needs to be looked at. And if you're a championship team that plays at a championship level, and a program that has aspirations of such, then this has to be a must-win game. And uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think that Harbaugh, they'd probably call it a playoff game or whatever they say. I don't know what they call it, but that's what this is. Absolutely. And as Jim said, that's uh, that's what they come here for, uh, to play in games like this. Totally. So it, it, yep. is, it is going to be everything you want on Saturday in the big house. Here with us on our uh, show this week has been Nick Baumgartner from The Athletic. Nick, always uh, great to have you on with us. We look forward to that next visit. Absolutely, Mike. Anytime. On Quick Hits today, Trent A. Jones is out with that high ankle sprain. Typically, it takes two to four weeks to recover from those. Roman Wilson missed last week's game with a concussion. He's practicing this week and might be available to play. There are no other injury updates. Here are a few game day notes of interest. Michigan leads this series with 15 wins against 10 losses. The first meeting was in Happy Valley on October 16th of 1993. A 21-13 Michigan win. Last year, we won a thriller in Happy Valley, 21-17 on November 13th. No one will ever forget that winning touchdown by Eric All on a bum ankle. James Franklin is in his ninth year as head man at Penn State. His record is 72-34. and Last year, Penn State raced out to a 5-0 start. Then the wheels came off. They ended the season 4-5 and five in conference play, 7-6 and six overall. They returned six starters on offense, five on defense. They ended the season playing in the Outback Bowl against Arkansas. They lost there 24-10. The weatherman says we'll see intervals of clouds and sunshine on Saturday. There is a slight chance of rain. The highs will be in the upper 50s with winds gusting from the west-southwest from 10 to 20 miles per hour. Saturday's game will tell us a lot about just how good both of these teams are. A win will take us into the bye week on a high note, and it will be a confidence boost for the last five-game stretch. As Jim Harbaugh said earlier this week, these are the kinds of games you come here to play in. It's going to be fun to watch. Next week, we have the bye week, or improvement week, as Jim likes to call it. So we'll only have one show, and we'll have that up for you on Thursday. That does it for now, though. Have a great Wolverine week, everyone. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Think victory, beat Penn State. Until we meet again, take care, and as always, go blue. Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man, here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network, and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24-7 for your calls, 
at 313-263-4842. That's 313-263-4842. Or email us at the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. That's the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. The Michigan Man Podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go Blue!